Hey families, uh, my name is Holly Compton and I am the TK through sixth grade math coach in Manhattan Beach. And um, I'm here to help us with quarantine math. Um, so I know that a lot of you guys are wondering um, what to do with math because math is so different from the way that we learned when we were kids. And so I wanted to show us today um, something called counting collections. So our kids are um, very familiar with counting collections. They do them throughout the grade levels. And it's really um, a matter of counting anything you have at home. So it could be socks, it could be rocks, it could be literally anything. Today I have some cubes, um, and this is gonna be my counting collection for the day. So um, what we do in class is we look at our collection first, and we really kind of ask ourselves how many we think might be in our collection. So we're making an estimate, we're trying to use mathematical reasoning. Um, I'm gonna say I have maybe 55 um, cubes in this bag. All right, so I've made my estimate and I'm ready to count. So I dump out my counting collections. Now, depending on wh um, what grade level your child is in and maybe um, where they are at in their mathematical trajectory, they might be counting in different ways. Some kids may count one to one. That means they go one, two, three, and so on. Um, other kids may be counting in groups of tens. So they may have thought to themselves, okay, this is a lot of stuff to count and keep track of. They may go, all right, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and they'll push that group aside, and then they'll keep going. Sometimes they even go two, four, six, eight, ten, if they're practicing counting by twos, because that's hard for kids. Um, and then they'd keep going. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then I have three left over. So some kids may count in groups of 10, like the way I just did. Um, and I actually did not count this back before I did my counting collection. And I'm pretty impressed here. I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1, 2, 3, 53. So my estimate was off by two cubes. So as your kids are counting collections, you want to ask them questions to extend their thinking. Like, how much further would you need to go to meet your estimate? Well, I would need to go two more, or I was two away from my estimate. Um, we could also ask things like, how many more cubes would you need to get to the next friendly 10? So if we're at 53, the next friendly 10 would be um, 60. So I would need seven more cubes to get to 60. Now, it doesn't matter if your kid counts by ones, or counts by tens, or maybe they've even counted by fives. They may even count by fives um, because we all have to learn how to count by fives. It's not as simple as it sounds when you're that little. Um, so maybe they've counted by five. I'm just making my groups of tens into groups of fives. Um, that's another extension question you could ask your child. If they've counted by groups of tens, you could say, well, how many groups of five would that be? So you, you just kind of get creative in what you're doing here with your kids. So then you would have your kid, if they counted by fives, you'd say five, 10, 15. You're gonna see some kids lose track. So some kids go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and they're not going in order, like the way that we would read a book. So, um, we don't necessarily say, go in order, go in order, but we would ask a child in class, oh, how might you keep track of the cubes that you've counted so that you know that you've counted them? So we don't directly say, do it this way. We, we ask them questions in order to help them guide themselves. Okay, so 
Um, let's say I was off track 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 and I'm counting and I'm going all over. You just want to simply say, hmm, I counted and I got a different number. Let's try again. Let's see whose number might be right. And then we can count again. And maybe we'll go in some sort of order. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 51, 52, 53. Um, some kids may also count by twos because kids are learning how to count by twos in early elementary school. Um, that's totally fine. Whatever way they decide to count is the way they're counting. So we really want the kids' brains to drive um, their instruction on how they're counting, and then we can give them little simple nudges as they go. Um, let's say they put all of these together and formed a big group of 50. We do see that happen in the classroom. They'll lay out groups of, like I originally had, groups of 10. And then sometimes they get pretty wise and they start going, oh, well I have a group of 50. And they put it in like a bowl or a container and they say, I have 50. All right, now we've got this overflowing bowl. There we go. And then I have 50 there and then three there. And then they say, I counted by 50. But that's not really true. Um, what we want to do when we're counting collections is actually have kids record their collection in the way that they counted it. So if your child counted by tens, in this case, they would have had one, two, three, Four, let's squeeze in a fifth group in there. Five groups of 10. So they would have a 10 in there. And then maybe they'll draw those three extra cubes that didn't have, that didn't have a um, bowl to go into. Now, if they draw, not this, but they just draw, oh, I counted by 50 and then I had three left over. That's actually not what they did. If they do that, it's not really representing what they did. So what we want to do is we want to have them show us what they actually did. So they have five groups of 10. And parents, remember, this is getting kids ready for multiplication. Even if they're in kindergarten, they have five groups of 10. So this is representing five times 10 plus three more. So we're really setting them up for um, that kind of thinking for when they get into older grades. All right, so let's say they did make that move, um, dumping the cubes into one bigger bowl of 50, or sometimes even 100, because we count pretty big collections. You can, what you would have your child do, or you would kind of nudge them to figure out, is that they had five groups of 10, like that, and then they poured them into one bowl of 50. So you would have them put a giant rectangle or a giant circle around it and show that ten, uh, five groups of 10 makes 50. And then you have the three leftovers, plus three more equals 53, like that. The big thing is we want the kids to drive their own counting. So we are letting them count in a way that makes sense to them. 